What's going down everybody? Brother Stevani is here. Welcome back to the channel, Command Center Wargaming. So in this video, I'm going to give you 10 essential tips for painting miniatures in tabletop wargaming. Whether it be Warhammer, 30k, or anything else, I'm going to go through 10 tips with you that are absolutely critical in your workflow for getting started in the hobby. And if you've already had a bit of experience, you might find something here of value as well. So who is this guy who wants to give you tips on miniature painting? Well, I've been working in the field of computer games for over 10 years in the field of art. I've also won many competitions at elite events. And if you type in Alpha Legion Leviathan, Alpha Legion Fire Raptor Gunship, Breaches, and a whole lot more, my stuff is ranking there on Google in the number one in the world position. So that's just a little bit about me. Now let's get into the 10 tips. Tip number 10 understanding your scope. So you've probably just gotten into the hobby, you might have walked into a games workshop, or your mate might have got you into it. And you've gone in there, you've grabbed a whole bunch of, bunch of boxes, chaos or demons or space wolves or whatever it is it might be, and now you've got all this stuff in front of you, all these little bits, and you've gotta assemble it all together. So you need, the first thing that you need to understand guys, right, is your scope. You need to understand what are you painting these miniatures for? And when I say what are you painting these miniatures for, I mean what system? Okay, a lot of units from Horus Heresy 30k can be used in Warhammer 40,000 as well, right? So you need to work out exactly what system you're painting for. So you must determine this first. And you can also think to yourself, do you want to use these units later on in another system? So for example, when I buy a, a packet like a Rhino, I might want to use that in Horus Heresy as well. So I take that into consideration before I start. The next thing you want to consider in regards to scope is how much time do you have available to you to invest into the hobby? You know, do, are you very, very busy at work like I am, for example? Or are you studying? you might not have time to start to, to do so much painting in the hobby as other people. So you need to take into consideration how much time you have to invest into your Warhammer or miniature painting. And once you do this, it's gonna help you have a better idea of your scope and your end goal and what resources you need and how much time you wanna put into it. You need to determine also what the meta is for your army or armies okay if you're playing 30k well the meta is less likely to shift than if you're going to be playing something in 40k which shifts all the time so that means that you're probably going to be able to spend a little bit more time on your 30k horus heresy miniatures as opposed to if they were for 40k because in 40k as we know the meta is constantly changing and you have to work out a timeline for your army painting so you can actually play with the units that you're painting before the points values change and they might even become obsolete. You might even want to repaint different units for different armies down the track. So once again, there's a lot of things to consider. So you really need to just have an idea of where you want to head before you can then head down that road. That's the number one, the number 10 tip actually, but it's a very important tip because it's going to flow on to all the other tips. And remember guys, if you're enjoying the video and you think there's value in it, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Tip number nine. Okay, so make sure that once you've worked out your scope, that you source and acquire the appropriate and necessary tools that you are going to need to perform your painting. Now, remember, 
A work person is only as good as the tools that they use. But you don't have to go out and spend a thousand dollars on an airbrush. You don't have to go out and spend fifty dollars on a brush. Okay? There are tools available from Games Workshop and other hobby stores and even junk shops that are very, very, very low cost and they will do the job. The only real difference is that sometimes the Games Workshop paint brushes will tend to last a little bit longer at times, whereas the more cheaper stuff is probably going to fizzle out a lot. Source out good glue that you feel comfortable with and have a play with it on the table. Now I've got a video on the channel that also talks about the best glues in Warhammer. Link in the description down below. You might want to invest in a small drill bit to drill in barrels of the guns so that you can get more detail in those miniatures and having more depth in the weapon itself as opposed to just painting it on with a brush. Don't neglect mold lines. Make sure that you get a hold of a very basic snipping tool and pruning tool and modeling knife so you can clean up your model before you start painting it. There's nothing, nothing worse than when you've spent so much time on an army and then you look at it and you've got a massive, massive mold line that you forgot there running through the shoulder pad. So spend some time, go to JCAR, go to electronics shop, go to the hobby shop, go to games workshop, get yourself some basic tools. Any tools for the job will be fine when you're starting off. You can get things on the cheap. What you also want to do is have an organized and dedicated work area, which is very, very well ventilated with your tools, paints and apparatus laid out appropriately. Tip number eight, do your research. So everybody wants to just dive in there and put your minis together. And that's absolutely fantastic. But no matter what you're doing, no matter what artwork you're doing, I do this all the time in games and film and everything that I work on. You need to make sure that you do your research, okay? Go online, have a watch of some YouTube videos. As I said, I've got a couple here, but also go online and have a look at other videos from other channels and just get an idea of some basic workflows before you just jump in there and tackle it. It'll take you no more than an hour or two and you can have an extremely solid foundation in the essentials of miniature painting and you can get everybody's techniques and mix them together. So it's very, very important to research what you're gonna do. Go online, go on Pinterest, have a look over Reddit, have a look in Facebook groups, okay? Make a little mood board or a collage of the minis that you like the best and attributes that you like the best about your miniatures so that you can draw on them for reference later on. However, just be cautious on the videos that you're watching. Remember to keep yourself in scope and keep your goals realistic. Oftentimes, a lot of YouTubers can show some really amazing work, and that's fantastic, and a lot of advanced work as well. But remember, when you're starting off, it's very, very important to understand the fundamentals. And that's going to lead me to point number seven. Point number seven, concentrate on gaining proficiencies on fundamental skills fundamental skills like paint consistency, brush control, and no overfill on shading. Remember, your army is represented on the tabletop as an army. So basic things like that are going to go a lot further for you with having an impressive army on the table than worrying about, you know, some scribe on the bottom of his knee plate. Tip number six, always remember that it's the combination of the units on the tabletop that represent your army. You are painting an army, not just an individual unit. Oftentimes, a lot of those fine details that we like to see over YouTube and such are missed anyway. Always remember that it's the overall look of an army on the table that is gonna create the most impression, not just one single unit. If you have one single unit that looks absolutely fantastic on the table and everything else plastic gray, 
the plastic gray models that are unfinished are probably going to outweigh the fact that you've spent two weeks painting one HQ. When we play Warhammer, we usually play with multiple models, not just the one, even in Kill Team. We have multiple models. So concentrate on painting an army, not just a single model. This means that your models in your army's base color and also their readability is going to be much more important to the overall aesthetic of your army than if we were just to have one epic model painted with edge highlighting and everything like that. Tip number five, work on and work out your tabletop miniature painting priorities. Work out which models should be painted first. Consider which models are going to be critical for your list. All these things will be very, very important for your painting process. You also want to think about what models can be replaced later and which models are, you, are going to be on the board for longer, like your commanders and your HQs. Because if you have a unit of Marines and you spend like a good few days working on nine Marines, chances are those bodies are just going to get removed from play eventually. And your commander will most likely be standing, hopefully. But you want to have a look at what's going to be on the table for longer, because what's, whatever's on the table for longer is going to be looked at for the longest, if that makes sense. So it makes sense to work that out so you can put more effort into those models. For example, large units like monstrous creatures, tanks and titans will all most likely require additional attention, time and detail because they're going to be a centerpiece of your army and they're going to be on the table for a fair while. Tip number four, organize your painting production cues and workflows. Consider buying and painting a test miniature first. You can always get those little games workshop blister packs or starter packs, or even the packs with the little Marines in it and they come with a few paints. It's a really good idea when you're just starting out to go through and muck around with some of those low priority units first before you put brush to your very expensive and cherished models. Yes, you can strip them down later, but why waste the time? Work your strategies out before you start painting your prime models. What you also want to be doing is identifying parts of the model before you start painting it that might be problematic to access with your painting tools. For example, if a Space Marine is holding a bolt art like so, it might be hard to get the brush down onto the Aquila. So for that reason, you might consider sub-assembly. It's what we call sub-assembly. And what it means is, is you're going to assemble part of it, okay, but you're not going to assemble all of it. And then that means you can paint individual parts and then you can stick it together later on. Now, you could also stick it together in total using blue tack, but you don't use glue, so it's not in its final state. That way you can get a good idea of the result and the pose as you are painting it. It also helps you to determine shading and lighting as well if you want to be doing that. It also will stop you from leaking null oil everywhere on different parts and null, null oil or contrast drip if you decide to use contrast. Consider batch painting your models. Paint them five at a time. Paint five marines and then a commander and then five marines and then a commander and repeat this cycle. And the painting the commander will help you break up that painting fatigue. So you're not sitting there painting the same unit 20 times over. This is very, very important when you are painting less elite armies with higher model counts as well. Once you are familiar with the fundamentals, you then might want to consider painting the commander first, because at this point in time, you now have the fundamentals down. So 
You can risk working on that awesome hero for your Space Marine army. And you can be comfortable while doing it and you have the skills to do a really good job. Now, personally, I actually like to work on the commanders first, but I've been painting a little while. So I'm pretty comfortable with a basic standard workflow. What happens with me a lot of the time, personally, is that if I paint too many troops first, then I'm kind of have a bit of painting fatigue, so I don't do as much of a good job on the HQ units as what I did in the troops, because that initial buzz and that initial stigma is gone. It was all, almost like grinding at that point. So that's something as well for you to consider. But when you're just starting out or you're just a beginner to the hobby, I highly recommend starting with your troops first, okay? If not buying a test model or getting a pack of green army men, something cheap. You can also test your paint schemes out on spoons, which is really fantastic. More videos on the channel, you can check them out. I do heaps of spoon tests on different paint. I will spend weeks, sometimes months, researching the exact color tones for my paints, including mixing my own pigments as well. You don't have to go that extreme with it. And I actually recommend that you don't at this point, but it shows you how important it is to be prepared. So you be prepared or prepared to fail. Tip number three, consider investing in an airbrush. Yes, I know, a lot of people consider airbrushing to be more of an advanced technique. They don't sell them in Games Workshop. Why would I want to go out and pay $100 for a cheap airbrush when I can spend that on another pack of models? Well, first of all, in these times, it's really, really, really not an expensive task to get an airbrush. You can get sufficient airbrushes for $30, $40 and up at a lot of places, and that'll be more than enough for what you need to do for base coating and just some object source lighting, some really quick stuff, undercoating, batch painting your models. You could batch paint a whole army, base coating, highlighting, okay, in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you line it all up and prepare them correctly. No joke, you could do that. That's how much time you could save. And what that means is, you save time there, which means you then have more time left over to A, enjoy your models, or B, focus on those fine details we all love and enjoy. Always remember, the bigger the army, the more of an investment an airbrush is going to become. Tip number two, remember, you're the only person that needs to be happy with your models. They're your models. So unless you're a competition painter or you're a commission painter, the only person that needs to like your models is you. And that's the most important thing, that you're happy with them. So always remember that. Also, take constructive criticism. When I speak about constructive criticism, I mean criticism that has structure and input and relevance behind it. Okay, it has to be reputable criticism, all right? There are a lot of people out there who, you know, they kind of want to be a bit mean, but most people are going to be trying to help you. But it's very important that you have a filter and that you do take criticism, but you also take the criticism from a reputable source. Because if you take criticism from the wrong sources, for example, internet trolls who are just out to you know have a laugh at your expense okay they're not actually out to help you then you can actually go backwards in your techniques and procedures so what i recommend you do is find some mentors in the hobby you're happy i'm happy for you to hit me up okay you know go down to the hobby stores ask some of them ask some professional painters all right even take some lessons maybe from reputable people that have your best interests at heart. And finally, everybody, tip number one, the most important tip that I can give for the beginner essential top 10 tip video is have fun. Take it seriously, sure. I take Warhammer and miniatures very seriously, but at the end of the day, 
understand that it's just a game. It really is just a game. And the most important thing is to have fun with it. All right. And if you're not having fun, there's no real point, is there? Be kind to others. You're also going to get better in time with your painting. So just be patient. Remember, you can always strip your models down later in the future if need be. That's not hard to do either. I've also got videos for that link in the description down below. Finally, what you're going to have to do is eventually you're going to have to work out the best practices for you. All right. You're going to have to look at everybody else's techniques once you've learned, once you've learned the fundamentals, and you're going to formulate your own goals and techniques. And that's the key because everybody's different. Everybody has different strengths and different weaknesses. And you need to play on those strengths. So if you find you know, airbrushing is quicker for you, then you might want to do that. You might want to use a brush. It's really up to you on how you do it. But anyway, everybody, these were my top 10 essential tips for miniature painting for Warhammer 40K and Horus Heresy. I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel, dropping a comment down below, letting me know what you think, thumbsing up the video, giving it a like. See you in the next video, everybody. Keep rolling.